Hi there, this is Eric Keller for Otoy. In this video, we're going to talk about working with environment lighting using the Octane integration into Unity. And for this example, I'm using the orbital scene, which can be downloaded from the asset store. So you can use it to follow along or just to experiment with. The orbital scene has a lot of elements to it. And I don't necessarily want to mess up anything that's already been set up. So I'm going to create a new scene using some of the elements that are in this scene. So let's go to the hierarchy. I'm going to select the planet group. I'm going to expand shot one, hold the control key and select Unity Station and press control C to copy them or choose edit, copy either way. And then I'll choose file new scene. I don't need to save anything in this scene. So I'll choose don't save, I have a new blank scene and I can choose edit paste. And we see now we have our space station and our planet and also some of the lights that came through with the space station. So let's zoom out here a little bit. Next, I need to add a PBR render target so that we can work with the rendering of the scene using Octane. So I'll go to the Octane menu and choose Octane Create PBR Render Target. I'll select PBR Render Target. I have my PBR viewport here, this tab down here. Uh, so I'm going to choose Render and this will compile and render the scene. So you can see here's the scene and it's using the default skybox lighting. If I rotate the view, you can see here's our direct light or our sunlight here in the background. Uh, I'm going to select PBR Render Target, go into the camera settings. I'm just going to use the uh, scene camera for this example. You could also add other cameras if you wanted to. But I'm going to go into the camera settings and set the aperture down to zero. That way we don't have any depth of field blurring, kind of making our scene look a little bit out of focus or anything like that. So aperture is set to zero, so we don't have to worry about depth of field. Next, I'm going to close the camera settings and go into the environment settings. So I'm going to set the select environment settings to render target. We're not going to see a whole lot of change right here, but this will make some other settings available. And I'm going to keep the sun set to directional light. So if I select the directional light, let's zoom out here because it's way out at the origin. I want to move it a little bit closer to our space station just so I can edit its rotation while we're zoomed in on the space station. The position of the directional light doesn't matter in the scene, just the rotation, but this makes it a little bit easier to just work with. If I select it and press the E key to bring up the rotate tool, you can see as I rotate the sun, you can see it in the background here and how it affects the scene. We're in outer space, so we don't really want a nice blue sky. We want a black sky with a star field on it. So to do that, I'll select PBR render target. I currently have this set to daylight environment, which is fine, but I need to remove the skybox material so it's not interfering with the background. So to do this, I'll go to the next to skybox material, click on this little circle, which will bring up the select material uh, browser, and I'll choose none. I'm not going to see a whole lot of change here. Uh, what we need to do next is set the background image. So to do this, I'll go down to the skies texture settings and you see this little swatch here. I'm going to click on select and this will open up our select texture menu. I already have a couple HDRI images within our project that I could use. So I'm going to select this HDR image, which is our star field. When I do that, we immediately start to see our nice outer space background. Let's expand this so we can see a little bit more and zoom in here. And now I can start to work with the lighting. So I'll select the directional light and let's move it over here and then just start to rotate it. I'm going to create something a little bit more dramatic. So let's rotate it so we don't necessarily see the sun, but we see the effect of it. This will give us a nice kind of sort of Martian feel to our planet to get some of that red lighting and a little bit of a glint there on our space station. We can zoom in here. Something like that looks pretty cool. I'm going to select our PBR render target and I set the sun size all the way down to 0.1. It's not so visible within our scene, but of course the light itself is still visible. So that way we don't have to see that giant white spot. 
and now I can get something that looks pretty nice. So let's talk a little bit about editing the uh, look of the star field in the background. I'll select PBR render target. We can, of course, adjust the sharpness of the shadows by changing the sky turbidity. The higher this value is, the softer the shadows will be. So I want to keep it nice and low for an outer space setting. And then if we really want to get specific about how to edit the look of our background image, I can click on View Source, which will open the Octane Node Graph Editor. So here's the Octane Node Graph Editor. I am mostly concerned about those nodes that are connected to the PBR render target. So I can select these other ones and just move them out of the way for the moment. And then zoom in here. Here's our environment node that's connected to our PBR render target, and here's our HDR image. So if I select this, I can do things like change the power, which is the overall brightness. So if I lower this, of course, our stars disappear. If I want to make them extra bright, I can select the power setting and type in a value. So if I set it to five, you can see we, the, the star field is much more visible. We can also adjust the gamma. So if I lower the gamma, you can see the galaxy becomes very bright as I raise it. It's a little bit less visible. If I want to rotate the position of the star field, I can go down to UV transform. The projection type is set to mesh UV. The UVs of the environment sphere are, of course, spherical. So mesh UV and spherical are going to have kind of the same effect. We could also set this to uh, different types of UV mapping, such as cylindrical, but in this case, uh, Nest UV or Spherical is going to be the most appropriate. Then I can take the Rotate Z value and start to rotate this around. And you can see that rotates the image. So if I want a little bit more of that galactic dust from behind the planet, I can do that. So let's say, for example, I didn't like the greenish tint to the background image. I'll right click in the Node Graph Editor and under Textures, I'm going to choose uh, Mappings Color Correction to create a color correction node. And then I'll hook my HDRI image into the input for color correction and then the output into sky texture. And now I can go in here and maybe adjust, say, the hue of our outer space. So maybe I want something purple or something a little bit cooler. So I'm going to adjust the hue, saturation, additional gamma settings, contrast, and so on. So that's kind of a nice option that you can use. Let's stick back to the original. So I'll connect this back to the sky texture and delete my color correction node. Once I'm happy with the settings, of course, I can close the Octane Node Graph Editor and go back into Unity and continue to adjust uh, the, the rotation of my directional light and so on until I get something that I think looks pretty good. So that's the basics of working with environment lighting using the Octane integration into Unity. So thanks again for watching.